Hello and welcome everyone to the supercut for the Balance Get Paid Up Nekoma edition. I was considering doing a huge supercut when I got all the groups finished, but for now, this is the one, and of course, it comes with bonus material. Enjoy! I can't believe I'm friends with the Kurtz again. Yaku laughed and Kemma rolled his eyes, already regretting having accepted Yaku's invitation to meet while he was visiting Japan. Shibayama chuckled at the face he made. Who would have thought Akema would become so famous? You're literally dating a model. Yeah, how is Liev Kun, by the way? Same big idiot. He tried sounding casual, but his ears turned red, and as he looked away, a soft smile was adoring his face. In Kemba's eyes, it was honestly much more surprising that they would make it work, but he was happy for them. Maybe he would have even told him that if he hadn't still been mad at the Libero for dragging him out for a drink. Despite hiding in the furthest corner of the small bar, it felt crowded and noisy. How about you? Any luck in matters of romance? He grinned at Shibayama, whose cheeks actually turned bright pink at the comment. Oh, well, I... Hey, I couldn't help but over here, so would you mind if I bought you a drink? A guy approached them from the side and leaned uncomfortably close to Shibayama, who visibly shrunk. Kenma too leaned further away in disdain at the lack of awareness for personal space. Um, actually, I was just about to tell my friends that I have a boyfriend. He let out a nervous laugh. From the corner of his eye, he could see Yaku's head perk up in interest, but his eyes remained focused on the guy, narrowed in suspicion. It's just a drink. How about it? I don't think that would be appropriate. What? Is he that insecure? Shibayama's expression darkened and anger flashed in his eyes. No. I try to be nice about this, but I don't want your stupid drink, and quite frankly, this is disgusting. For a moment, the man's ego seemed to have taken a hit, but then that awful smirk returned. Feisty. How appealing. Come on, sweetie. He doesn't... Hey, asshole. He said no. Now back the F off. What are you gonna do about it, Midget? Kemma flinched. This was not going to end well. Yako's expression had darkened and he had that forced, almost feral grin stretching his lips as he tried to contain his anger. Step back from him, creep. You... Wait... Him? You're a guy? He stared at Shibayama in something like disgust, taking Kemma off as well. He could feel the anger building like water slowly starting to boil. Yes, so now that it's obvious that neither of us is interested, would you care to leave? You are annoying. You think you can make a fool out of me? That would require you not to do that yourself. His voice was quiet compared to the rest, but the guy still heard him and snapped. Kemba's eyes widened as he saw the fist swinging toward him, and for a moment he was frozen in shock, but Yaku stepped between them, deflected the punch and shoved the guy backward.
He stumbled, visibly drunk and fighting for balance. When he managed to steady himself, a growl-like, incoherent sound came from him, drawing the attention from those around, from which, sadly, some seemed to be his friends. Hey! How dare you attack my body like that! Well, your buddy started it. Yako had placed himself between them and the other two, staring the idiots down with his best death glare while motioning for Kemma and Shibayama to leave the bar. They hadn't even made it two steps before the fight broke out anew. Kemma lost track of what was happening rather quickly, while he still tried to make sense of it and search for an opportunity to escape with his friends, he was suddenly grabbed by the shirt and lifted slightly from the ground. Pain exploded in the side of his skull as it collided with a fist aimed at him. Instinctively he brought his hands up and in a moment of clarity he managed to angle his elbows above the arms holding him and bringing them down in a rapid motion, freeing himself. Upon falling to the ground he didn't waste time to skid backward and when hands reached for him again he blocked it with his arm. The guy gripped his wrist hard to the point of pain, but this time Kemma could move more freely. When the guy pulled, it actually helped him to regain his footing and dodge the next attack by leaning backward, which simultaneously threw the other off balance. It only lasted so long, and surprised by his own success, he didn't notice the other approaching from behind and wrapping his arm around Kemma's neck. His eyes widened in panic as he was held up, where the one who attacked him first aimed for his stomach. The air was punched out of his lungs and Kemma doubled over trying to catch his breath. He coughed and spit flew from his mouth. Hot anger surged through his veins as he saw them mocking him and with all he had he pushed himself up and headbutted the other in the face. A scream echoed from behind and he let go of him. Kemma expected the guy who attacked him first to come at him again, but when he looked up, he saw that Yaku had taken care of that. And not just that. The libero looked arguably to be in the worst shape of the three of them. His cheeks bordered a bloody cut. He had scratches and bruises blossoming on his arms and neck, but his opponents backed off on their own. They screamed something along the lines of, This isn't over! We're visibly shaking and backing off. They were lying to themselves, and Kemma knew it. You okay? After making sure that none of the idiots would attempt anything again, worry coined Yaku's expression, and he gathered him and Shibayama to get a closer look at their injuries. More or less, you look worse though. Yeah, shouldn't we be asking you that? Shibayama looked shaken and stared at Yaku in shock. Ah, you know how it is. We liberos are used to some bruises. He grinned and with a napkin and some disinfectant started to clean out the cut at Shibayama's forehead. The younger hissed in response. A couple of tears were forming in his eyes and he visibly struggled not to let them slip. There you go. He turned to Kemma next, who luckily had no open wounds to show, but he was certain that the hit to his face and the grip on his arm would bruise. How are you feeling? Do you feel lightheaded? He shook his head. Everything considered, he felt, okay. It could have been much worse. Everything was just... Overwhelming. I get us all right. Yaku nodded slowly and put an arm around Shibayama as they walked out of the bar. Kemma couldn't help but notice that there was a slight limp in the Libero step.
Inside the car, Kemma gave the driver their addresses and asked for Shibayama to be dropped off first. The younger finally allowed for the tears to spill as they were settled safely inside. Kemba could emphasize well and saw even Yaku wiping at his eyes a couple of times. He himself let his head fall against the cool surface of the window. His head was throbbing and everything, every sound, flickering light or touch, hurt. He closed his eyes in frustration. He just wanted to drown and hide in the dark void of sleep where no one could disturb or irritate him. He hated when it got to this point. He felt so wrong and uncomfortable in his own skin and just wished he could rid himself of the ability to feel. Upon arriving at Shibayamas, he waved them goodbye and whispered a small thanks before hopping out of the car and swiftly closing the distance to the house. Next was Yaku. Even though the Libero tried to insist Kemma should be dropped off first, but the gamer just waved him off, weakly exclaiming that he had done enough today and should rest. Every discussion was pointless anyway and ultimately they stopped at Yaku's and Liev's apartment. The Libero hesitated before stepping out to go home. Kenma, I'm sorry. I convinced you to go out tonight and now this... this wasn't the plan. Of course not, but it's fine. He took a deep breath and opened his eyes ever so slightly to meet his former senpai's gaze. It was nice seeing you again, Yaku. The other smiled. Yeah, you too, Kenma. He closed the door as quietly as possible, leaving Kenma alone to his thoughts. He was grateful for the silence suddenly filling the car. The only thing still audible was the silent hum from the engine and the rustling of the wind outside. Kemma could feel the subtle vibrations of the window and for just a moment he let that lull him in. For just a moment he dissociated, away from the pounding in his head or the nausea that followed the punch to his stomach, away from the worrying about what Kuro would think if he had come home bruised and battered. Kuro. He longed for his embrace, and soft, reassuring words whispered between kisses. It was the only kind of touch he had welcome even in this state. For just one moment he let it be just that, a blissful daydream, until the car came to a halt in front of their house and he was forced to step out and face reality. With a sigh, he got up, only pausing to tip the driver, if only because she was nice enough not to disturb him and smart enough not to listen to Yaku. She thanked him with a bow and wished him a swift recovery, her eyes straying to his temple. Dread settled in his stomach, so it was noticeable. He didn't yet have the chance to assess the damage, but the reaction wasn't promising. After the car was out of sight, Shibayama slowly let his head sink down to his side. His smile fell and for a moment he felt just lost. He stood in front of the house, staring down at the street, unsure what to do next. It was as if until now he hadn't even realized what happened. Everything just transpired in such a rush. He could barely remember the moment it all escalated. It had been seconds from Kemma's comment jumping to his defense to a full-on fight breaking out. His heart was still thrumming wildly in his chest. Something like this had never happened to him before. The cut on his forehead still burned and he felt a little disoriented. His head had collided with the wooden surface of the bar as one of the idiots had shoved him against it. It had almost been an accident. As soon as all hell broke loose, he had been practically forgotten about while Yaku drew all the attention to him, 
unafraid and prepared to kick ass, which he did. He was glad to be so overlooked in the actual fight, but he couldn't shake off the guilt. As soon as it started, he just froze. Unable to move, he watched as Yaku defended him. He hadn't even managed to dodge the hit that was aimed at him. It was pathetic. Tears began to prick in his eyes again and he sniffled. Suddenly, before he could decide what to do or bring himself to move, a bar cut through the silence from behind. He flinched shortly, but the sound was very familiar, and soon he felt little paws at his hips, as their Shiba Inu jumped up at him. Yori, what are you doing outside? Automatically, he turned around and knelt down to welcome his dog. The pup was barely two years old and still very excitable. Before he could prevent it, he jumped again, causing Shibayama to land on his bed, while the dog licked the salty tears from his cheeks. A wet giggle escaped the Libero's throat and swallowed his weak protest as his hands flew up to comb through the short golden fur. His chuckle was soon joined by another. A light, carefree sound he immediately recognized as Inuokas. I thought I heard a car. Yori really missed you, you know? As if he understood, the dog barked in confirmation and nudged him again with a snout. I missed him too. His voice sounded thin and he quickly buried his face against Yori's fur to hide from his boyfriend a little longer. Yori, come here. You can continue cuddling inside. The dog jumped up and freed himself from Shibayama's arms. It was incredible, but whenever it was Inuoka, he listened perfectly. With Shibayama, it was a hit or miss. His trader of a boyfriend said it was because he was too lenient with the dog, but he disagreed. With a bit of effort, Shibayama fought himself up, or at least tried to, until halfway he was met with his boyfriend offering a hand. He smiled, which was even worse, because now he could see the exact moment Inuoka noticed that something was wrong. A small frown settled between his brows as he saw the cut on his forehead. He reached out a hand to inspect it, but halted when Shibayama hissed at the touch. His eyes searched his which were undoubtedly red-rimmed from crying, and he looked down in shame. Yuki, what happened? His voice was laced with worry, and he gently pulled him closer by his hand. Shibayama tried to answer. He really did, but his throat suddenly felt like it was rapidly closing, and all that left his mouth was a pathetic sob. New tears fell from his eyes and in a rushed attempt to hide, he buried his face against Inuoka's chest. Immediately, the taller brought his arms around him and started to soothingly pat over his back. Next to them, Yori appeared again. He whimpered and walked in confused circles around them. He went from nudging them in their sides to letting himself fall onto his front paws to animate them to play. Inuoka observed him from the corner of his eye, and a soft smile tucked his lips upward. Come on, let's go inside. He gently but determined guided Shibayama forward, and Yori followed suit. He barked happily as they moved. As soon as they passed the door, he rushed past them. Shibayama could hear the soft clacking of his claws against the wooden floor, and before he had even managed to take off his shoes, the dog was back again with a toy in its maw. It was a little lamb plushie and made Yori look forbiddenly cute. I'll make us some tea. Do you want chamomile or green tea? Surprised he looked up, Inuoka's eyes were gentle and he smiled at him warmly though Shibayama could see how his gaze strayed to the cut time and time again. 
Am I my? Okay, give me a minute. Before he could so much as nod in response, Inuoka had disappeared inside. He gulped, still fighting for the little composure he had left. He barely felt his legs as he stepped inside, mechanically following his boyfriend. His boyfriend, who he didn't even manage to tell his friends about. A bitter taste assembled in his mouth at the thought. He had been really excited to tell them, actually. Inuoka and him were official for a year in less than two months, though it wasn't widely known. The team knew, but it hadn't been publicly announced. They didn't want their relationship to become a matter of the public, even when the interest in a Division II libero probably wasn't that great to begin with. This was the first time seeing his old teammates in person again, and he wanted to tell them, but he got nervous and tongue-tied. Yako's question was a heaven send, but then those idiots showed up, and now it remained a secret. He sighed and urged himself to move, surprised when he found the kitchen empty. He didn't have the energy to wonder anymore where So had run off to, and just let himself fall onto one of the chairs. Him not being able to tell them about the relationship was arguably the least bad thing about today's evening, but to Shibayama it was just the cherry on top of his shortcomings for today. As if he hadn't been already enough of a useless and downright bad friend today, now he was also a terrible boyfriend for not speaking proudly of his partner. <laughs> he couldn't even take his worry upon arriving, so he must have thought the worries when he just started crying into his shirt so suddenly, wounded. More tears slipped from his cheeks, and at this point he didn't even try to prevent it any longer, when suddenly a bag landed on the table in front of him. Took me a while to find it, but here we go. We really should have more of these, with you being an athlete and all. He grinned jokingly, but Shibayama could see the worry in his eyes as he tried to make this easier for him. So... His eyes strayed down to the object, only now recognizing the medic kit. Okay, let me take a look at that first, then I'll make us tea. And you can take all the time you need to explain what happened. His heart swelled at the swift care his boyfriend provided. His voice was gone and all he could do was nod and let him take the lead. He inspected the cut carefully and fished a band-aid from the kit along with some disinfectant. Yaku-san cleaned the cut already. Yaku was with you when this happened? He nodded and Inuoka let out an audible sigh of relief. He still cleaned the wound once more, apologizing when Shibayama flinched from the stinging before he gently and thoroughly applied the bandage. There you go. Anything else? He shook his head, though he regretted it immediately as a sharp pain followed the movement. It must have shown on his face because Inuoka looked at him, his eyes full of concern. Just some bruises. We liberals are used to those. He repeated Yaku's words darkly and gulped. Any that are worse than the others? He thought about it for a moment and thought the events of the evening over once more. He still didn't quite feel like he had regained his full control and feeling over his body as the adrenaline was still wearing off. I hit my head, but I don't think it's that bad. The taller nodded slowly and moved to inspect the place Shibayama showed him. Do you feel dizzy or nauseous? Only from anxiety. He knew it was true the moment he said it. This feeling, at least, was very familiar for him. Inuoka, however, didn't seem convinced. 
He sighed and put the first aid kit aside while moving to the kitchen counter. He took two caps from the cupboard and Shiba Yama's heart fluttered as he recognized the cute Shiba Inu cap Inuoka had given him for his birthday. Just tell me if it gets worse, yes? He nodded, observing him as the Tala prepared their tea. While the water started boiling in the kettle, he met his gaze and a soft smile adored his lips. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you. You didn't. Well, I am worried, obviously, but I doubt that it was your fault. He took in a deep breath and finished up the caps before placing one in front of him and sitting down next to him. Their kitchen table was small, fitting only four chairs around it, meaning that he neither sat opposite to him nor right by his side. It was perfect to talk while offering the support he needed right now. So, what happened? The seconds ticked by as Shibayama tried bringing the events into a logical order in his mind, while Inuoka waited patiently. I could probably also call and ask Yaku if you don't want to talk about it yet. He could see him tense at the idea, confirming that Inuoka was probably imagining much worse than a simple bar fight. He hated this. He had to speak up before the worry would eat the other alive. Shibayama knew by now that Inuoka had mastered putting on a calm and soothing facade even when things got bad. An essential skill when working with children, and he was very good at his job. But underneath it, he still worried so much. The former middle blocker had such a big heart that always felt for others. He offered him constant reassurance when he needed it, and right now Shibayama needed to reassure him that he would be alright. And there was one more thing. No, I haven't told them about us yet. Inoka felt it. For the blink of an eye, Shibayama believed to see confusion and a sharp flash of pain reflected in his eyes. I wanted to. Really. I... I just... When Yaku asked me whether I was seeing anyone, suddenly this guy showed up and started flirting with me. I shut him down immediately, but he wouldn't let it go. Worse. He thought that I was a girl. It was new to Inuoka that Shibayama felt rather insecure about his feminine appearance, and as such, immediately a look of sympathy coined his expression and he reached out to take Shibayama's hand in his. And my Yakusan defended me, and it escalated. They attacked you? Yes. They were brainless idiots, toddlers who didn't get what they wanted. Just a lot bigger and scarier. Disdain swung in his voice, and he pursed his lips tightly. Inoka offered him a reassuring squeeze before, after reassuring himself that it was okay, he got up to gently pull him into his arms. See, I was right. This wasn't your fault then. He soothingly wrapped over his arms as Shibayama let himself be soothed by his boyfriend. I guess. Not you guess. You said it perfectly. They were idiots. I'm just frustrated because I couldn't do anything. I just froze. Inuoka hummed and rocked them slightly. That's okay. I would have been scared too. Not too scared to help your friends. I don't know. That's what I like to think, but... I have never been in a similar situation. Shibayama was sure Inuoka would have done something, but he didn't say that. Besides, even if I'm not you, people react differently and that's okay. But 
if you want to change that, you could take courses on self-defense and stuff. And stuff? A small chuckle escaped Chibayama's lips, making his boyfriend smile. What? Nothing. Just... Those kids are lucky to have you. You must be awesome at your job. Yuki... He whined playfully and hugged him tighter while plastering kisses on his face and neck until it tickled. He laughed, but after a moment, a new wave of pain passed through his head, and before he could prevent it, Inoka had already noticed and stopped. Sorry. It's fine. It's not too bad. He raised an eyebrow at him in disbelief before determination settled on his face. Alright, for this grave mistake on my part. So... There was a warning in the way he said his name as he noticed his boyfriend starting to act a melodramatic again. I shall spoil thee for the rest of the evening. Before he got the chance to protest, Inooka had lifted him into his arms and carried him to the couch. You are impossible. Impossibly handsome. Shibayama punched his arm slightly, but didn't deny it. Yaku pushed the door open to their apartment complex with a groan. His shoulder hurt, his arm hurt, his cheek and ankle, and overall everything hurt. Assholes. He muttered silent curses under his breath while stepping inside, one hand on the wall to support himself. The events of the evening left a bitter taste in his mouth, not simply explained by the lingering taste of alcohol. To think someone would have the audacity to be so downright creepy. It was disgusting. Poor Shibayama seemed utterly shaken when they dropped him off at his house. He just hoped whoever Shibayama's mysterious boyfriend was would care for him well. For his sake, of course. If he didn't, he'd be worse off than the guys at the bar after Yaku was done with them. Or maybe he just said that he was in a committed relationship not to have to talk to the guy further. He heard from many of his female friends that idiots like that seem to respect a hypothetical other man more than the woman right in front of them. Guess he can count himself lucky to have Liev. The silver-haired was an idiot in his own right, but of the lovable kind, not the creepy one. He sighed, trying to harness his protectiveness over his former co hosts He simply couldn't help but fall into old habits again when he saw the younger freeze up in fear. It didn't help that it were Kemma and Shibayama out of all of the former Nekoma players. Though he was surprised and actually pretty impressed by how well Kemba could hold his own in today's fight, he knew this smaller could be feisty and incredibly stubborn, but that still came as a shock to him. Shibayama, on the other hand, had been visibly caught off guard. Yaku didn't blame him. He would have expected such a reaction. The younger had grown up to be a truly great man. Yaku had been to a couple of his games, and he was nothing but proud of the younger Libero. He vividly remembered turning bright red when Shibayama had mentioned him in an interview, mainly because to this day, Liev was still teasing him about it. Suddenly, a sharp pain shot through his system as he attempted to climb up the first steps and cursed. His body slumped against the wall. Fuck. <laughs> he sucked in a sharp breath and gritted his teeth not to let the pain grow and slip. It wasn't as late as he expected to come home, but it was late enough that being too noisy would earn him a complaint from the neighbors.
With a sigh, he steeled himself and proceeded. Surely it couldn't be that bad. He only misstepped while avoiding the fists swung at him, though this was certainly preferable from the black eye he'd have gotten himself otherwise. Three steps later, and he wasn't so sure anymore. He lay hunched over on the steps, supported by his outstretched arms leaning on the stairs above. He was sweating as waves of pain radiated from his ankle and washed through him. Spit assembled in his mouth like acid as he was forced to keep quiet. Yakub forced deep breaths into his lungs, while fighting for composure. One would assume that at the very least the pain in his leg would overshadow and drown out the rest, but instead it seemed to amplify it. In the minutes Yaku had to remain still and catch his breath, he was painfully aware of every single cut and bruise he had earned tonight. So, walking it off wasn't an option, huh? He sat down and wiped his face to get rid of the sweat and remaining tear tracks, only for his cheek to sting and his sleeve to come back bloody. Right. The cut. He sighed again. His ribs ached slightly at the movement. The Libero considered calling his boyfriend, knowing full well that despite him being an athlete where Liev wasn't, the giant could carry him effortlessly. <laughs> Stupid titan. It really wasn't fair. He chuckled to himself, a small smile playing on his lips while he ignored the stretch, increasing the pain, warming the skin around the cut. Ultimately, he decided against calling his human embodiment of a golden retriever. The silver head would make enough of a fuss when he saw him already. No reason to give him a heart attack by letting his imagination run wild. So Yaku fought himself up by the wall once more, going for a slightly different strategy this time, jumping rather than walking, with one hand at the wall for balance. This time his ribs protested, but that was far more manageable. Liev, can you help me out? He had managed to open the door and get inside the apartment, but at this point his energy was depleted and his nerves lay blank. He was angry and stressed out. His foot hurt and he had to grit his teeth not to let show how much. Hmm? Sure. He sounded sleepy and Yaku could hear him slowly making his way over, stumbling twice. A small smile tucked his lips outward as his boyfriend appeared in the doorframe, his hair a silver mess and eyes barely open. Did I interrupt your beauty sleep? Hey, no teasing about that. I need it for work. He pouted and Yaku could feel his stress slowly melting away as the lively green eyes found his, clouded with drowsiness. He still didn't seem to recognize the shape Yaku was in and just leaned a little lost against the wall. You're early though. Why? I thought you wanted to stay out a little longer. Yeah, that was the plan, but we ran into some idiots and the evening was cut short. Oh? Yaku carefully untied his shoes, but still hissed as he took off his left one, moving his ankle ever so slightly. He needed a moment to get his breathing back on check. Either way, I'm glad you're home. Liev didn't seem to have noticed and suddenly long arms wrapped themselves around him from behind. Yoko was unprepared and didn't manage to hide the flinch when he accidentally brushed over some of the newly acquired bruises. This time the silver head froze and his green eyes fixated on him in concern. 
He knelt down beside him and quickly turned on a light Jaco had previously ignored, deeming the one shining from the living room enough. A choked gasp escaped the taller and his eyes widened as he took in Jaco's appearance. His mouth was a gap and a variety of emotions flashed over his face. Liev, it's not that bad. I'll explain. Not that bad? Morisuk, you look like you have been beaten up. His voice was high-pitched in shock, and Yaku could see his eyes first getting glossy, then turning dark. Well, who did this to you? Liev, it's... No, it's not fine. I want names. If you don't have any, we can find them out. They can't get away with this. I won't let them. I... Lievochka. He faltered and Yaka could see him trembling slightly. It's... I mean, I have taken care of that already. You don't think they are better off if I look like this, do you? He chuckled, but Liev didn't join in. You kick their asses. How he could stay so serious while saying this, Yaku didn't understand. But he smiled softly and nodded. It did. They were running for the hills once I was finished with them. He reached out and gently took Liev's hand in his. Liev, I'll be fine. Thank you for wanting to defend me, but... But you don't need it. I understand. I mean, if it's between the two of us, I'd rather get some bruises. After all, you need that pretty face for your job. Wouldn't want it to get damaged. Mori. You know that I wouldn't put my job above you. I'd always... I know. Niev was so adorable when he worried Yaku didn't know how much he'd fallen for him. Those expressive, emerald green eyes were raw with emotion, and Yaku could feel himself getting giddy at the sight. He pressed his lips together not to let it show. Luckily, I already took care of the fighting part. All I need now is my boyfriend taking care of me for a bit. He said it lightheartedly, or at least it was meant that way, but new worry filled Liev's eyes and he looked at him in utter concern. Maybe I should bring you to the hospital. Huh? He could see that the other was completely serious. What the hell, Liev? I'm fine, it's not that bad. You can't be sure. If you, out of all people, willingly ask someone for help and care, that's a red flag. In fact, it's... You are my boyfriend. How is it weird that I ask you for help? Because you usually don't. You always keep up the strong act. That one time you got injured during a match and were prescribed bad rest, I had to physically hold you in place. That's... Yaku was about to argue further, but as he saw the expression on Leah's face, he stopped. His boyfriend looked stressed, worried, and hurt. You usually never just let me take care of you. It's always a battle. Leah. He thought back on it and found that he wasn't completely wrong. He hated feeling weak, but today he already knew he wasn't after winning the fight, so letting Liev take care of him didn't feel like a sign of weakness anymore. I'm sorry, Liev Ochka. That was my mistake. But I really don't need to go to a hospital. Just your care will be enough. Are you sure? Because you just admitted that you were wrong, and... I'm sure. It felt like another slap to the face, and Yaku could feel anger boiling up inside him, but it wasn't directed at Liev. It was directed at himself. 
How could he ever make his own boyfriend feel so unhurt? Like his opinion didn't matter. He let his head fall and didn't dare meet the green eyes again he loved so much. Okay, I believe you. It would have been fair if you didn't. What hurts? What did they do to you? Mostly it's just a couple of bruises and scratches. But, well, you have seen the cut on my cheek and... I twisted my ankle. For a brief moment a shadow flashed over Lia's face again, but he just sighed. You should have called me. I could have carried you upstairs. What if you made it worse? I'm sorry. Just promise me that if it doesn't get better in three days, you'll see a doctor. He nodded reluctantly, and before he had fully processed the request, the ground suddenly disappeared beneath him. Lief had swiftly taken him into his arms, and without any detours, brought him to their bedroom. Upon placing him down on the soft mattress, he organized some pillows seemingly out of nowhere to prop up his head and foot. I'll get you an ice pack. He hurried out of the room and left Yaku alone to his thoughts. He didn't even realize his behavior had hurt Liev. How stupid of him. Mori? In only a few seconds he was back and gently placed the cold object on his foot after having wrapped it in a layers of towel. But he seemed to notice that something was wrong aside from his injury. What is wrong? Does anything else hurt? He shook his head, his throat suddenly tightening. No. I'm sorry, Leah. He cringed slightly. It's just so weird hearing you say that. I'll bring you to the doctor for real if... He joked, but Yaku didn't consider it funny. Exactly this. How can you be surprised that I'm apologizing? If... If this is how you see me, I must be an awful boyfriend. What? No. Mori... His voice was soft, gentle. Why not? You think that I'm sick because I apologize and try to take accountability. You think I need to go to the ER when I share my concerns because I usually hide my pain from you. I'm just a prideful jerk. Well, I won't completely deny the last part. He smiled while Yaku just felt disgusted with himself. How could he still look at him like this? Mori, you are not a bad boyfriend. Some people struggle with showing affection or saying that they are sorry, but that doesn't mean that you don't. In your own way. Like when you make me my favorite food after we argued, or bring me sweets to work, surprise me with a small gift. You say you're sorry, just not with words. How can that be enough? It is to me. I don't need words to understand you. Yaku wasn't quite satisfied with his answer, though he felt his boyfriend's reassurance taking effect. It isn't to me. He thought about that for a moment. Then we can work on it. You mean me. I'm the one that has to work on it. We'll work on it together. Because we're a team, Mori. How on earth did she deserve such a considerate boyfriend? He felt his throat tightening further until his words got stuck, which probably was good. He doubted Leaf would accept any more protest. 
Can I hug you? A Yakukut master was not, and immediately the long arms snuck their ways around him again, much more careful than before. I love you, Mori. I love you too. Yeah. The words came out choked, but he meant every single one. Kema stood in front of their front door. His fingers clenched around his key and his hand hovered just above the lock, but he didn't open it just yet. There was a rushing in his ears that increased with the wind picking up speed. And soon, small droplets of rain started falling from the sky and were blown onto his hair and clothes as well. Oddly, the cult was soothing. It offered a nice contrast to the heat pulling around the bruises he acquired and something else to focus on beside the nausea. He didn't dare move as the bitter taste assembled in his mouth, followed by a stinging sensation. It trapped him in place as the world spun and he had to focus all his efforts not to vomit. Tears pricked in his eyes and his breathing grew shallow. He fought on the sick feeling with deep breaths and hope it would just vanish and gritted his teeth. He hated being sick. He hated vomiting. The sensory issues that followed such an event bordered on unbearable to him. His concentration was broken when through the rustling, filling the air, an insistent meowing cut the silence. It echoed from behind the door and Kemma would have to be deaf not to recognize the cries of his cat. The small Kaliku cat by the name Himari, meaning sunflower, for one, because she had bright yellow eyes, and two, because she reminded him of Hinata, adorable, overly ambitious and she can jump really high, had a high-pitched meow usually directed at Kuro to plea for food. Whenever she meowed, she wanted something. And right now, she sat in front of the door, calling out, probably for Kemma to come inside now for cuddles. The corners of his lips twitched in an attempt to smile, but he immediately regretted it as the nausea returned full force. He groaned and his hands started shaking. Hmm. Himari, what are you doing there? Seeing ghosts again, kitten? Upon hearing Kodos voice through the door, warmth spread in his veins and the prickly feeling of tears assembling in his eyes became more prominent. With a deep breath, he forced down the nausea and moved. The lock clicked and relief flooded his system as the door finally swung open. Inside, he was greeted by Kuro kneeling down, Himari on his lap and further ahead, he saw that black Bombay cat, Hibiki, lingering at the entry to the hallway. She got her name from constantly following Kemma wherever he went moments after, and meowing when Kemma would get frustrated after losing his games. His fans loved the small black kitten mirroring its owner and named her Echo. You're home early. Kuro smiled up at him while Himari swiftly jumped from his arms and circled around Kemma's legs, sending him as a welcome home. Kemma breathed in deeply. He felt a wave of calm wash over him at the scene in front of him. This was good. Familiar. He was finally home, and instantly the feeling of safety had overwritten the nervousness buzzing through his system whenever he left the house. Kuro still smiled softly at him, still oblivious to the shock that still vibrated in Kemma's bones from the attack. He had opened his hair, which had previously been put up in a ponytail. The long strands fell like a curtain to both sides of his face and covered any blemishes he had been marked with throughout the events. It wasn't like he wanted to hide this from Kuro, but he'd rather tell him on his own terms. After he had managed to get inside and cuddle up with his cats, including the overgrown one he called his boyfriend. 
Though, despite having played for Nekoma, sometimes Koro's tendency to follow Kema around the flat and seek out physical touch reminded him more of a dog. Then again, compared to Bokoto or Liev, who both definitely were human reincarnations of the animal, he was fairly normal. They always betray me when you get here. Koro pouted as he observed the cat lovingly snuggle up to Kema's leg and faint hurt. In truth, he had a whole thorough collection of pictures featuring Kema and at least one of the little furballs. And the gamer knew that. Not true. Himari loves you. He had knelt down to open his shoes, but gets stopped by the small Kaliko, who placed her head in his hand as soon as it was in reach, which made the task increasingly challenging. Only if she wants snacks. He half, but Kema could hear the click of his phone, and as expected, when he looked up, Kuro was still snapping some pictures to immortalize the moment. And Kema smiled. He'd usually feign annoyance, but this was so familiar that it provided just the comfort he craved at the moment. Slowly, Kuro lowered his phone. His own lips were adored by a smile, soft and warm like the sunset in early fall. He looked gorgeous. You okay, kitten? Kema nodded slowly and got up to put his shoes aside. Big mistake. The nausea had momentarily faded when he knelt down. He had completely forgotten about it, bathing in the comfort of home, that now he had barely time to think or regain control. He went stiff at once. His eyes widened. For a second, he could still see a frown setting in Kuro's brows and him moving to say something before he was already pushing past him. His shoes fell long forgotten onto the floor in front of their front door. Kenma? However, he didn't make it far. Not as far as he wanted, needed to. His legs felt shaky and his knees as though the attached muscles were made of jelly. He fell, his knees and hands colliding with the floor, but the short burst of pain did little to distract him from the sudden wave of acidic fluid rising up in his throat. He gagged. It felt awful, and for a moment, panic rose within him as he struggled to breathe. What grounded him was a pair of hands suddenly rubbing over his back and wandering up to hold his hair back. It's alright, just let it out. You're gonna feel better. Kuro soothingly massaged over his tense muscles and whispered soft reassurances until Kema's breathing calmed. The YouTuber could feel every ounce of strength he still held on to drain from his body as he collapsed against Kuro, who mindfully pulled them back from the small puddle he left on the floor. I'm sorry. His voice was rough and speaking hurt. Kuro held on to him tighter and gently corrected their position. When Kema heard the pleading meow, this time his eyes wandered over to the living room door, realizing that Kuro had locked the cats inside so that they wouldn't get in the way. It's okay, Kenma. Do you feel better now? He nodded slowly. The nausea wasn't as bad anymore, but aside from that, he just felt plain awful. Everything hurt. The pulsing warmth around the bruises was sickening, and he felt uncomfortable all over. His skin was overly sensitive, his throat and mouth burned from the lingering acid, and he just wanted to cry out his frustration. I had a little bit too much. He shook his head. He wasn't capable of much more, but... Kema felt the same gentle hands gathering his hair back again on one side and knew that he had found it. The bruise just above his temple must have grown even more noticeable throughout the ride home because Kuro immediately tensed. He didn't touch, just inspected it more closely and mapping out its edges with his fingertips merely ghosting over the area.
Kenma, what happened? Who did this to you? His voice was an odd mixture of concern, desperation and slowly growing anger as he was just realizing what this meant. His expression hardened and for a moment he seemed frozen in place but in his eyes burnt murderous intent. Tetsu. In comparison, his own voice was a weak excuse, battered and bruised just like him right now, but it worked nonetheless. Kuro snapped out of it, his eyes full of worry as they met his again. Right, you can tell me later. His eyes hectically searched over the scene, then Kemma. They stopped at the mess on the floor, his dirty clothes and the bruise again, and it seemed as though he was formulating a plan. I'll prepare a bath for you. I'll take care of us, okay? You just rest. You can tell me everything later and if I need to beat someone up for this, I'll gladly do so. That coaxed a tiny smile out of the smaller before the frown returned to his face. Wait, you don't have to, I can. He tried to set up, even though that was probably a stupid idea. And before he could test that to be true, Kuro had already stopped him again. Not a chance. That part isn't debatable. He swiftly whisked him up into his arms and before Kemma knew it, he was being placed on the edge of the bathtub where Kuro pulled his favorite items from the cabinet. Kemma was very particular about scents. They could easily irritate him and he generally hated anything too strong, or too sweet, or too bitter, in general, too much of anything. He preferred natural, soft scents that weren't as overwhelming as most chemical ones. For bathing, there were only a few he could tolerate. One, Koda was currently pouring into the slowly filling bathtub, tinting the water dark blue like the deep layers of the sea. The room filled with the soft scent of patchouli and Kemma already felt the effect it had on him as the tension drained from his body further. He slowly started undressing, but faltered midway as he felt Kuro's gaze on him. There was pain in the soft brown eyes Kemma loved so much, and he first didn't understand why. The taller slowly closed the distance between them and hesitantly reached out a hand. His fingertips, which had previously mapped out the injury on his scalp so carefully, now traced patterns on his neck, forearm and stomach, leaving him confused until Kemma caught his own reflection in the mirror. His temple wasn't the only thing that was bruised. Even so shortly after the events, small purple spots started to appear where he had been choked, grabbed and hit. He lowered his arms, his shirt halfway hanging from his right wrist. Here, give me that. Kuro gently took the dirty pieces of clothing from him and helped him remove the rest. I'll take care of this. You rest. Wash off the stress. You can relax now. You're safe. Kemma's breath caught in his throat and he nodded. I know. He let himself sink into the water. Warm, not hot. It still felt like it was burning him at first, and an involuntary shiver ran down his spine. For just a moment, he allowed the water to engulf him from all sides and sink under the surface. He enjoyed the eerie calm it brought, the utter silence aside from his own heartbeat sadly echoing louder. It was peaceful. He didn't know how much time had passed when Kuro returned. The raven had changed into pajamas and held a stack of fresh clothing for him as well. They didn't say anything as Kuro sat down beside the tub and took the hand Kemo offered, 
simply showing he was there for him if Kema needed him. And he did. Right now, he needed Kuro's strength. Kema had fought well today already, now he just wanted to feel safe in the strong arms of his partner. He needed his care, his gentle words and calming touch. He needed Kuro to be just himself as he always was, a little too worried about him, a bit of a dork and his favorite lovable idiot, who happened to be a bit too much into chemistry based on his awful chemistry pickup lines. He needed the stability he provided. Kuro. Come here. He already waited with a towel and just hugged him in it as he stepped out of the tub. Are you feeling okay? Kama made an unintelligent noise that sounded between annoyed and tired. Kuro chuckled softly and pulled him closer. Stupid question, I get it. But other than this, was the evening okay? He nodded against Kuro's chest as the taller rocked them slightly. I'm glad. We should organize a team reunion sometime when we get the chance. Shibayama has a boyfriend now. It came out muffled by Kuro's shirt and even less illegible since Kema's voice was still rough, but Kuro understood regardless. Really? Damn, is no one of us straight? That had Kema laughing and he pulled away slowly. Kuro let go of him reluctantly to let him put on clothes. Before long, they were snuggled up in bed together after having to gently place their cat somewhere else since they decided the middle of the bed was the perfect place for a nap. Now they lay curled up next to them. Himari had curled up at their feet and Hibiki next to Kema's head, who in turn used Kuro's chest as a pillow and let him hold him securely against himself. Do you want to talk about it? Not really. You? A little. I mean, I know that you're safe now, but I'm still worried. I want to know what happened so that I can prevent it next time. There won't be a next time. Oh, definitely not. I'll send Yaku to dropkick anyone who tries. Kama laughed again and snuggled closer. He is way ahead of you in that. Kema could feel Kuro relax a little more. So you weren't alone when it happened? He shook his head and Kuro released a breath he didn't know he was holding. But Kema still could sense some tension and who could blame him? A guy started flirting with Shibayama. He told him off and it escalated. I think the idiot was mostly mad at me at first. Why is that? I might have implied that he was making a fool out of himself. He was. Kuro chuckled, but it wasn't quite back to his typical laugh. And then he just attacked? Well, yeah, but he hooked a step between us. However, he wasn't alone. Had some drunken friends, and one led to the other, and, well, here we are. Kuro nodded slowly, gently caressing over his arm. Are you still scared? He took a moment to think about that. No, I don't think I was really scared at the moment either mostly shocked and then annoyed because it caused me to have a headache and then the nausea. Sorry again about that. Mm -mm. Still not your fault. 
don't apologize for that. Kim half quietly. He buried his nose against the fabric of Kuro's shirt and breathed in the comforting scent deeply. Kuro smelled like home. Thank you for taking care of me. Kenma, I will always take care of you. I love you. I love you too. When Shibayama woke up, he was met with soft lighting falling in through the light curtains they had decorated their bedroom windows with. He blinked at them, confused as they swayed in the light morning breeze. The window had been left ajar to welcome the fresh air that caused the fabric to dance. A little disoriented, he sat up. He could have sworn to have fallen asleep downstairs on the couch. What else irritated him was that Inuoka was nowhere to be found. The bed next to him was empty. So? The name seemed to echo and get lost in the otherwise empty room. His heart clenched and he sat up further to go and search for him. However, when he reached the edge of the bed, a sudden dizziness washed over him. He groaned. His head ached in protest. Instinctively, his hand flew up to the spot where heat was pooling in, and he hissed as he felt the small bump that had formed where he had collided with the bar yesterday. Slowly, the events found their way back into the forefront of his mind again, and immediately his mood turned more mellow. Yuki? Inuoka pushed the door open with a shoulder, a tray of food in hand. He smiled at him warmly, though Shibayama could see the concern reflected in the brown eyes. So... I was searching for you. Well, he was about to. So far, he only searched this room. Still, the smile on the taller's face brightened ever so slightly, and the concern wore off a little as he saw Shibayama safe and sound in their bed. Before he could justify his absence further, a bark echoed from behind him, followed by the excited clicking of claws on the floor. Yori had little regard for the situation and jumped straight onto Shibayama's lap, despite being a little overgrown for that by now. The libero was pushed back into the cushions by the enthusiastic dog that started to lick his face in greeting. Shibayama laughed and allowed the dog to tell him good morning thoroughly while weakly attempting to calm him and protect his face from the slobber attack. <laughs> Did Sona give you enough attention this morning? Hey, I made breakfast. Said breakfast was now carefully put on the bedside table, drawing in the attention of their pub, but one sharp look from the older had the dog sitting well behaved at the end of their bed. Here, drink something first and take one of these if your head still hurts. He offered him a small pill, which Shibayama gladly accepted. Thanks. He kissed him on the cheek before reaching for the glass of water and swallowing the pain medication. Just as he was about to inspect the food further, his phone interrupted the peaceful atmosphere from the other side of the bed. It's probably Yaku again. He tried reaching you a couple of times this morning. I didn't accept the call because he said you hadn't told them yet. About us, I mean. Oh. Despite trying his best to hide it, Shibayama could hear the subtle disappointment accompanying his words. Inuoka must have noticed the guilt plainly written on his face because suddenly a pair of arms wrapped around Shibayama's middle and soft kisses trailed up his neck. Inuoka smiled against the sensitive skin and gently caressed his muscles where his hand rested. You don't have to accept the call just yet. 
we could eat breakfast first. To say he was tempted was an understatement. Accepting the call felt like having to face the reality of everything that happened yesterday, and Shibayama was perfectly content wrapping himself in the protective bubble wrap that was his boyfriend's tender care to shield himself from reality a while longer. But he relented with a sigh regardless. No, he's probably worried enough already. I should at least tell him that I'm alright. Fine. Inoka sighed and reluctantly let go of him. When Shibayama turned around, he was met with a pout and he couldn't help but laugh. He leaned up swiftly to kiss it away starting at the corners of his lips before pressing an actual kiss to them. Inoka gladly accepted and almost didn't let him go again. When he did, Shibayama had to call Yako back because he took too long. He threw a glare in his boyfriend's direction, who didn't look even the least bit remorseful. Shibayama-kun, finally! The younger gulped and began to nervously fumble with the edge of the blanket. I'm sorry, Yakusen. I just broke up. Is everything alright? That's actually what I wanted to ask you. How's your head? It's fine. I'm still a bit dizzy and it hurts, but I'm doing much better than yesterday. From the corner of his eye, he could see Unuoka stiffen as he mentioned it and the concerned gaze he threw at the bandaged wound on his forehead. That's good to hear. Do you have someone looking out for you? Just in case, head injuries can be tricky. Um, yeah, actually. He looked at his boyfriend, suddenly nervous, who smiled at him softly. He didn't seem to have picked up yet what Shibayama had planned. S so, is with me. Hmm? So? As an Inoka so? Mm hmm. We're kinda. I mean, we are dating. We're dating. Since 10 months, 3 weeks, and 2 days. To be exact. He wanted to bang his head against the nearest wall in embarrassment and felt his face heat up. He didn't dare look at his boyfriend. His eyes were glued to the blanket as he waited for a reply. Oh, that's... that's great. Unexpected, but great. Mm -hmm. He couldn't say anything anymore. His face felt like it was glowing like a neon sign. So is he with you right now? Can you hand him the phone real quick? Sure. With shaking hands, he offered the phone in the general direction he expected his boyfriend. Inuoka accepted it with a small chuckle and soothingly patted over Shibayama's back as he hid his face in his hands. Hello, Yaku! How are you doing? I'm fine, all things considered. There was an odd sound in the background, like an exasperated sigh, but Yaku ignored it. Anyway, make sure to take good care of Shibayama, yeah? Of course, he deserves only the best. He pulled the Libero closer to his side as he said it, and pressed a gentle kiss to his hair afterward. It caused Shibayama's cheeks to burn up further, and with something resembling a small wine, he made himself even smaller. Good. You better don't change your mind on that. Never, Yakusan. 
He tried sounding as confident as he could, though he felt himself getting nervous. Alright, now I want to call Kemma next to see if he's doing okay. Want me to give him a message? Just wish him well from us as well. From both of you? Yes, for God's sakes, I can't do this twice. He interrupted them, causing Inooka to try and fail to suppress his laughter. When Yaku hung up, it didn't even take a second for Shibayama to be back in his boyfriend's arms. He hugged him tightly while plastering his face with kisses. You are so adorable, Yuki. I'm not. He snuggled himself closer to Shibayama's side with no intention of letting go of him. Yari saw this as the perfect opportunity to intervene and jump on Shibayama's chest, causing him to groan. The dog licked his face once before lying down and looking at him expectantly. You two are impossible. Yeah, you love us. Unfortunately, I do. Yaku, now that's a pleasant surprise. Shut up, as if I never call you. It was true that their rocky friendship persevered even throughout their ways parting after school. They did call each other occasionally or send a photo of whatever they were doing at the moment. Kuro, for his part, was just now still lying in bed with Kemma, who had snuggled up against his chest, preventing him from moving any time soon. He looked so relaxed and asleep. The long strands of hair lay entangled around his head like a halo. Kuro's heart positively melted at the sight, and he reached out a hand to softly brush a few strands behind his ear. I wanted to ask how Kemma is doing. At the reminder of what happened yesterday, both from Yaku's words as well as the bruise that was revealed under his hair, Kodo's face darkened. He's doing okay, everything considered. He's still asleep. It looks like it will take a while to recover from this. His expression was grim as he softly caressed Kemma's back. He fought really well yesterday, you know. I wish I could have prevented it, but when it came to it, Kemma held his own in the fight. <laughs> yeah, my kitten can be stronger than he looks. He said it with pride, as his eyes never strayed from his boyfriend. His beloved and most precious, Kuru treasured Kemma more than anything. Take good care of him, yes? Of course. He thought the call would end there when Yaku spoke once more. Oh, and did you know? Shibayama and Inuoka are a thing now. No kidding? Damn, it shouldn't be statistically possible, but here we are all as gay as a maple tree. A laugh echoed from the other side. Yeah, well, I'm happy for them. Hmm, me too. I wonder how they got together. I'll ask him next time. Take care. With that, he hung up and left Kuro alone with his thoughts. He smiled tenderly as he looked down at his boyfriend once more, silently promising to keep him safe as long as he was close enough to do so. Thank you so much for watching this super cut to the end, it really means the world to me and you can't believe how well this is for the algorithm, it's awesome. Leave a like and a comment if you liked it, that is also pretty cool for the algorithm. And of course, subscribe! And most importantly, you have to tell me which one your favorite shit was. The next group I want to do is Inarizaki, by the way. So tell me who you are most excited for in Inarizaki. Special thanks to my nerdy Nekos who helped me so much. 
And here are my other social media to check out for you. And of course, there will be more videos in the end card. Now I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day and that you enjoyed this huge super cut. There will be more. Step one, wake up, really gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.